Um, thank you for inviting me to speak to you about Garden City's comprehensive plan. My name is Jenna Thornborough and I'm the Garden City Development Services Director. Um, from just a snapshot of Garden City, um, Garden City small from a land perspective, just over four land uh, miles. Um, from an Idaho perspective, Garden City is relatively dense and deals with a lot of urban issues on a small town budget. Um, it's part of a rapidly growing region, as we all know. Um, and Garden City is really constrained from growing out much more. It's only real options are growing to redevelop the property that's within the city limits and a few areas of impact. Um, that might not necessarily be a negative issue for Garden City as the cost of services are increasing everywhere. They're certainly not decreasing and density could potentially help defray uh, with those costs. Um, and of course, of course, a big item today is that Expo Idaho is in the middle of Garden City. Um, and what is a comp? plan. A comp plan really is just the, the plan for a jurisdiction, a long-term plan. Um, many people think of, of a comp plan as being a future land use map, and that's certainly a big component, um, identifying in broad strokes our areas uh, designated to be residential, commercial, mixed use, etc. However, um, there are a number of goals and objectives that really go beyond that basic use designator. Um, from a system approach, the Expo Idaho influences many of the goals and objectives. This slide is just an example of several goals and objectives that are specifically germane to the Expo Idaho site that are found within the Garden City Comp Plan. Um, for example, uh, there are a number of goals and objectives related to roads and mobility. Um, a specific example of a road identified within the Garden City Comp Plan is the connection of Adams Allworth to Marigold Street to create a main street um, for and through the city. Um, there are also a number of objectives that might relate to something like safe routes to school, ranging from support the schools, be fiscally responsible, contribute to the health and well-being of the community. Um, a safe route is ideally separated from vehicular traffic and visible, um, but that's not always feasible. So as much as possible, it should be a direct, safe and comfortable uh, route to the schools. Uh, Glenwood is a gateway street in Garden City and the comp plan, the Garden City comp plan speaks to the gateway streets as um, ideally being uh, tree-lined boulevards. Um, however, of course, whatever happens at Expo Idaho will have some effect on Glenwood and vice versa. Um, my hunch is that uh, based on traffic flow and safety, Glenwood will never really be able to have more than maybe one or two access points into the Expo site. Um, and uh, Chinden is another gateway street that runs through Garden City that's of utmost important to this of utmost importance, excuse me, to the city. Uh, currently, Garden City is collaborating with ITD in um, the hopes of generating a redevelopment plan for uh, Chinden uh, that aims at reducing safety conflicts, increasing all modes of transportation in a safe and comfortable manner. Uh, that includes uh, vehicular traffic, but also bikes and pedestrians as well as uh, transit, so buses right now. Um, and also acknowledging the adjacent vulnerable populations that live next to the road, as well as use the road in a non-vehicular manner. And this is just kind of a fun slide of what that potentially might look like if it redevelops. And specific to the, the Expo Idaho site, even if there's no change at the site, which I understand is a, a potential option on the table, um, Garden City is interested in partnering and addressing some of the safety and mobility issues along Lady Bird Park. Uh, specifically, there's a, a bus pad um, that has a really steep drop off at the back of the pad and no safe access to and from the pad, as well as there's a lack of mobility through the site for bikes and pedestrians. Um, 
Garden City Comp Plan is full of goals and objectives related to the Boise River and floodplain. Uh, that's likely because it's, an, it's anticipated that 74% of the city's in the floodplain and there's also six miles of river within the city. Um, in looking at the Expo Idaho site, the green area has been outlined roughly. That's the current regulatory flood plain. However, the pink area um, is what it's what the anticipated flood plain uh, really does look like. And how that's addressed in the Expo uh, Idaho site could really have some um, significant implications, not only for the Expo Idaho site, uh, but for a lot of Garden City. Um, an example of what I mean when, treat, when saying how that's treated, um, say additional flood conveyance is, um, is generated through the site, that could potentially reduce a lot of the floodplain on the site itself. Um, but it's also um, possible that that could change the, the flood, um, the anticipated flooding through the plantation um, subdivisions site north of the river. And also it's anticipated that a lot of the flooding that's occurring um, north of the river west of Glenwood is actually crossing Glenwood from the plantation area. And so there's another huge area of uh, flooding that could potentially be mitigated if, if that um, were addressed. There are a number of other city systems um, that have goals and objectives scattered throughout the comp plan that specifically relate to the Expo Idaho site. Um, and for example, the Garden City Public Works Department provides utilities to the site. Um, the police department provides services to the site. Um, right now, the, the Expo Idaho site's pretty quiet except for during the fair. Um, and the police department knows that they need to staff up and um, anticipate overtime during the fair time. But um, ideally, any future use would um, be able to pay for the additional services that would be required. Similarly, there are other services within a city, uh, such as the Garden City uh, Library. Any increase in patronage uh, may occur from what occurs at the, at the site. And then Garden City's comp plan has an entire goal uh, that has its eye on the Expo Idaho site. The 2006 plan looked at the site as the spot for a downtown or a heart for the city. The 2019 plan looks at the spot that could be a heart or a center for the city. The future land designation uh, leaves the door open a bit um, for a number of reasons. Uh, redevelopment desire, market conditions, et cetera. And so it's really just called out as a future planning area. However, there's some text in the comp plan that uh, specifically notes that it's Garden City's desire that, that the Expo Idaho would re, site would redevelop as a town center um, with uses that have high community benefits such as schools, hospital, hospitals, or performance space. Um, there, there is that connection of Adams and Allworth to Marigold that's desired. The line was dashed in that the specific location of how that should occur uh, wasn't identified in the comp plan. It's just that the connection um, is desired at some at some um, configuration, I guess. Um, increased access to the river is noted, as well as floodplain considerations specific to the Expo Idaho site. And then it notes that commercial uses along Tinden and Glenwood are, high, are very likely appropriate. The following two slides are photos that were found to be desirable by the community and the comp plan committee as related to the Expo Idaho site during the 2006 comp plan discussion. And uh, the last slides, I have a number of them in the presentation, um, were the presentation that was given to the 2006 Comprehensive Plan Committee. And they're just um, a depiction of what uh, an urban center could look, on, look like on the Expo Idaho site. 
Um, the slides that I'm using were developed by Misty Kressler, then Roy Ball. Um, and she specifically looked at the site as an urban center within the context of Garden City's history of Chinese gardens. Um, and her, her presentation was much larger um, than what I'll give you today. But if you see some of those concepts were um, utilized in, in her uh, generation of this plan. Um, and so, as I noted, she really looked at the Chinese garden concept alongside the urban design uh, concept. And her design generators that she used for the river, the floodplain, um, she actually utilized the Hawk Stadium as a design generator, as, as well as those high volume arterial roads of Glenwood and Shinden and Adams Allworth. And then she looked at vehicular pathways as garden paths and started introducing green pathways um, into her design concept, as well as pedestrian pathways doing the same. And then she also looked at what centers of activity could look like and um, created districts of garden space within the area. So she broke it down into different districts. And she also looked at what she called the real trees, flowers, mountains, buildings, um, and, and garden scenery. And then she broke that down into smaller districts yet. Um, as you can see here, not everything in her, her idea uh, was developed where she left the floodplain as a park-like setting. And then she did also identify what potential heights could look like in that area. Um, a lot of her heights range between uh, really in, in her core areas, uh, higher buildings, more like six stories, where she did also acknowledge um, that there may be other areas where it might be more appropriate to have one or two stories. And so along Chinden and Glenwood, she proposed three to six story buildings. Um, and, and noted on that one to two stories are existing. Um, and then she had a main street where again, three to six stories. Um, and then she had a neighborhood street uh, that's more, um, you know, two stories in nature and a lot more residential in nature. Um, and then the last slide that I'll leave you with is um, just a rendering that she did of what that could look like um, from kind of a aerial view. And, and that's my presentation. And I do thank you um, for all of your patience in the, in the beginning while we got the, the slideshow working. And um, do you have any questions? I have a couple right now. Right. That scenario, the scenario that you just presented, would that look like just utilizing the full 240 acres? Is that correct? Just to make that is sure. correct. That does, and I, I do believe that included every all the entire site. Okay. I thought when I saw something in the comprehensive plan that um, the town center that Garden City was talking about, that last slide, was really just one piece of that property. So I, is the... What is Garden City's expectation, if you will, for the use of that property? The whole thing or a piece of it or? Um, it's, the, it's left open. Um, I'm, I'm sure ideally the whole thing uh, Garden City would like to see turn into a town center. But what that looks like, um, the comp plan doesn't really, you know, dig its fingers in and specifically say, well, we want this to look like this and this to look like this. I've heard um, different conversations ranging from, you know, is there the ability to leave a component of, of the fair and still uh, redevelop and have, you know, the commercial along the corridors and potentially relocate Ladybird Park uh, to deal with some of those floodplain issues. Um, uh, but the comp plan tried to specifically um, not be too specific and open that up to a future planning area um, as designated. Okay, appreciate that, thank you. Thank you. 
Other questions? Ed, Ellen? Yeah, you bet. Just a, a thank you for uh, the presentation. I really appreciate it, all the work that has gone into it. And I was hoping that you could uh, help me kind of what your the process the city, uh, Garden City went through with the floodplain and determining what is feasible and what wasn't feasible. And I think you might have mentioned that there were some opportunities to, for lack, for pardon my words, about mitigating some of the floodplain. Um, maybe that's not correct, but could you process for us, if you would mind? Absolutely. Um, the floodplain is quite a, an issue. I don't know quite where to start. Um, Recently, the Lower Boise River uh, was updated. The FEMA maps were updated. Currently, Garden City's in something called seclusion. And what that means essentially is the, the 2003 regulatory maps um, are still staying as the regulatory maps right now within Garden City. Um, the reason that FEMA allowed the city to do that is there was a dramatic shift in the anticipated floodplain, um, where, as I mentioned, 74% of the city's anticipated to be in the floodplain. The 2003 maps um, identified that there might be certain levees within the city, and that's why the maps look so different, where FEMA's uh, revised mapping procedures don't allow uh, the maps to anticipate those levies. Um, and, and there are a number of reasons for that. They would need to be certified to be anticipated. And those levies, who knows how they were made? Were they old cars and junk just shoved up? Um, do they really exist? Um, you know, there are a lot of questions with those. And so what Garden City did after reviewing uh, FEMA's proposed maps um, partnered with the city of Boise to look at the engineering to make sure uh, that the city was comfortable with that. Um, and the engineers that were hired uh, in that joint effort said, well, those maps look pretty accurate, actually, in a nutshell. Um, and so then the next step uh, the city did was partner with the Army Corps of Engineers to see if there's anything that the city could do to help mitigate some of that risk, because it's not just the hazard risk, which is severe. Um, there's also an economic risk of, it, of everybody's um, flood insurance and what they would have to do to develop or redevelop. And so in doing that, we, start, we had about a year of working with the Army Corps under a certain program that the Army Corps has. It's called the 205 program. And um, the Army Corps was fairly confident that perhaps there could be a solution um, that the city could get to to dramatically reduce the floodplain. But um, the study got as far to know that it would exceed the authorities of that 205 uh, program. And so um, from there, uh, the city has applied for a congressional, it's called a general investigation study. And so that's where we are right now. Um, we're hopeful for funding, but it hasn't been funded at this point in time. And so there's been no real, you know, should it be a levy or flood conveyance or any actual design identified as the best solution. Um, but that was just one that I threw out saying, perhaps there's a potential to create additional flood conveyance there. Um, I do know enough from, from that project that, um, that there is the idea if the water could be lowered um, at the Expo Idaho uh, site, perhaps that would uh, reduce the flood, um, the flooding hazard risk in the plantation area, which then is anticipated to cross Glenwood over into the, I'll call it the Riverside Village areas. So is there, a, so it sounded like there may be, um with the, uh, the general inspection or general investigation, those are things that still need to, you're still working on that would, that are going to be part of this process as well um, as you look into this. That's still to come, right? That is still to come. Okay. Um, so that may not be the recommendation from Army Corps at the end of the day. They may say, no, we think there should be a levy here or whatever iteration of um, um, flood protection 
implementation you can think of. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ellen, did you have additional questions? You're muted. As if I've never been on a video call before. Um, yeah, thanks, Andrea. Um, I was just going to go back to the comp plan for Garden City and just maybe, I know you presented on that, Jenna, but maybe you could go back and just talk a little bit more about the what maybe you heard from the public and other stakeholders that were involved in the comprehensive planning process. I don't know how much of that is easy to call up right now, but just um, part of what the citizen advisory committee is tasked to do is um, represent different constituencies. And I think part of what they wanna hear from Garden City is just to build off of and learn what you learned through your process in talking with the Garden City community, you know, kind of where obviously the county serves you know, more than just Garden City, um, but just to get some more insight into what that, you know, your community has been interested in supporting. Is it like, is it supportive of, you know, I mean, generally speaking, is it like everyone's like, let's get rid of the fair and build a downtown or was it, you know, more nuanced than that or? Um, I think it's slightly more nuanced than that. I, so the the recent update to the comp plan was building off of the 2006 update or um, adoption of the plan. And so in some regards, I think it was already set that the idea, the direction of the comp plan is a, a heart for the city, a downtown. Um, and that's part of the reason I went back to the 2006 in the, in the presentation today. Um, but I think in conjunction with that, there was an awful lot of concern with that floodplain, um, as well as um, making sure that people have access to the river um, and the green belt system and, um, and that the, the property at the Expo Idaho, it, should it redevelop, be something that is beneficial to the community. And so that's some of the text that got in there where it's, the text in the comp plan uh, notes schools, hospitals, or performance space. But I think that there's a wide variety of things that you could um, look at and beneficial to the community. Um, but the environmental component, I think, was uh, a pretty strong um, component that we heard through the discussions in the 2019 uh, comp plan revisions, um, as well as access to the river um, and then I, there was also kind of a, a slight shift from the comp plan committee, um, and you can see it in the comp plan as well as looking at the fairgrounds or the Expo Idaho site as being the location that's a potential for a heart or a downtown for the city as perhaps this is, perhaps it's better for the city, which is a shift from how you're looking at it, um, but perhaps it's better if the city looks at it as a potential location and uh, look at other potential locations as well. Okay, yeah, and could you, on that note, if I may, you guys, um, just maybe carry on with that line of thinking. Could you, um, could you elaborate on why the Expo Idaho site is, has been viewed as like a really critical location for a town center? And then if not there, you know, what what is the alternative? So kind of like, why is it important to Garden City, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe saying the obvious, but I just wanna lay this all out there for people. Why is that site particularly important or desirable? And if it could never become a town center for Garden City, does that just leave Garden City? You know what I mean? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it would certainly be a, a different um a, a different redevelopment so i think that the the first reason is it's right in the middle of the city so it's it's really right in the middle it's not shifted to one side or another um and so it would be nice to have your downtown kind of centered within your city mm -hmm. um and then the other is it's large it's very large it's, it's really under single ownership 
um, land and it's not overly developed. And in looking at areas that could redevelop into a downtown, not that other areas can't redevelop, they're just a, a lot harder to do. If you're um, looking at hundreds of different property owners, um, everybody has an idea of what their property should look like, um, as well as just the piecemeal um, redevelopment, not that it can't happen. Um, I think part of the shift that we saw between the discussions in 2006 and the 2019 discussions is that Garden City really has uh, made some land use changes in, in certain parts of the city where um, we've, we've seen um, redevelopment that really could start working like a destination center. Uh, would it be as big? I doubt it, um, but it really could become micro destination centers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, but there, there, it's not, I don't wanna talk out, you know, that it's not a desire for Garden City to have a town center. Um, should the Expo Idaho redevelop that way, I think that would be ideal from Garden City's perspective. Okay, so just, you're, you just said it, it would be ideal if the Expo Idaho site chose to incorporate like a effectively a Garden City Town Center. That would be consistent with the comp plan and generally what you heard from the Garden City community. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. And then it's not impossible, but just harder to create a town center elsewhere in Garden City is the other. Okay. Was there conversation around, so right now, obviously that site is very unique within the county and serves, you know, all the whole county and really beyond the county as part of the conversation. And so I wonder um, from that perspective, having a Garden City Town Center doesn't really, it's um, I think some people will say or think, there's this really unique space. Could it be better utilized? Yes, but maybe turning it into a town center isn't is not replacing it with a equally unique and countywide serving space or use. And so, do you see a possibility of it being still kind of this county, like beneficial to the county in some way, or different than, you know? I don't know, things that are ever, you know, in other places, right? Like neighborhoods and yeah. Yeah, they're all great things, but mm -hmm. you know, they're they're not unique within the county the way the Expo Idaho site is. Well, certainly I do do see where um it there could be a great benefit to the county. Um uh, county wide if that became a town center in um the region and the the region's growing really rapidly. Um, you know, we're adding a Taco Bell arena of people every year and trying to fit them in into our essentially two county um, area. And how do we service um, both the existing uh, populations as well as the new populations as they come in? And the, the county's having a separate dialogue right now about the cost of service. Um, and having a much denser um, uh, development that's already on existing infrastructure is really smart growth. It, it takes the redevelopment land use dollars that are coming in and stretches them much further than if they would go elsewhere. Um, and that is where we talk to your EMS services, your policing services, your roads, your utilities. And so that would really help defray the cost of, of a lot of the services. So is it a fair? No, it's not a fair. Um, but I think there there's a lot of opportunities to make a really unique downtown center as well um, that, that could be a great place for people to come and enjoy year round um, where who knows, maybe there's some nods to the fair too. Um, it, if the entire site would be utilized, maybe you have a Ferris wheel that runs year round and you know, you have these great destino destination locations that people can interact with. Um, 
And then I know that you, you're tasked with looking at, well, if that is an option, how much of it is an option as well. So maybe you know, there could be a hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, on that note, unless I don't wanna um, prevent other people from asking questions, but just to maybe finish this out, I wonder if um, officially or unofficially Garden City has um, prioritize any parts of that parcel as being more desirable or important for um, the community to develop, you know, in a certain way. And then related, you mentioned, you started to talk about the Ferris wheel and things. I guess, I wonder if um, there are existing uses on that parcel that maybe you could see remaining there and being compatible with other so I know this is asking you to speculate a little bit and, mm -hmm. um, let's just be clear that you're just probably not representing the council or mayor or any of that necessarily thank but, you <laughs> yeah. um, I I do think that there are areas that perhaps make more sense so that you have that flood plain area um, I know that there's been dialogue with uh, the county at the Commission level City Council level um, is there any opportunity of taking Lady Bird Park and relocating it back in that floodway and maybe addressing some of the floodplain issues? Um, and, and so I think that that is a very interesting thing that's, that's potentially out there that could really affect, you know, the, the Garden City floodplain. I don't remember the exact number of property dollars that it affects, but, you know, let's throw out a billion dollars again. Um, I know this is all being recorded, but that's not the exact number. <laughs> um, Good. So that I think that that component uh, potentially could really affect um, both the value of the, the Expo Idaho site, as well as a lot of properties uh, within Garden City, which are also within the county. Um, and then if, if that were to occur, I know that there's been discussions, then you open up um, property adjacent to the corridor that could be utilized uh, for redevelopment. And so there could be, perhaps that's how that's paid for or something along those lines. Again, all speculation, I'm not representing <laughs> an official stance. Um, and then components of what could stay. Um, over my tenure here, I've, I've heard all sorts of things. Um, but one thing that I have heard is, um, would it be appropriate to have the Expo Idaho site be like a convention center. And so having redevelopment that also incorporates, you know, some, maybe some of the buildings that are out there mm -hmm. in that regard. Okay. And the sky ride, that has to stay. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Um, okay. And can I just ask, for the relocation of Leadwood Bird Park, you were talking about that from a, that would help with maybe floodplain role efforts. Is it also the case that that corner is particularly desirable for something else or better suited? Or were you really just speaking about the floodplain aspect? Um, well, um, I think that the, the volume of traffic that goes by that corner, you know, 40,000 vehicles per day, um, it's not standard practices to choose to have a park there. I'm not saying that that's the wrong spot for a park by any means, um, but typically uh, the highest and best value for a property if we go there uh, probably would tend to be more commercial in nature. Can I jump in with a question in that regard? Because I know there's something in the, in the um, comprehensive plan in fact, I have it right here that talks about uh, it's an action step and it says to amend the land use code to prohibit any additional strip commercial development and expansion of existing commercial areas. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's kind of a goal in the plan, it, it, does that conflict, I guess, with what you're saying with the Glenwood Tindon corner there? I mean, for that to be possible to become commercial? Not necessarily. Um, in the, the strip development, yes, it would be along corridors. Um, but I think the strip development 
really speaking more maybe you know drive in drive out keep keep going type of development um even if it's just a corner that's redeveloped you could do that where it becomes a destination on, on that same note i guess because you had mentioned that denser development is good for growth um does that in itself conflict with the part of the comprehensive plan that uh, wants to recognize and promote open space um again i i, I don't think that it does um you know, where a, a big example that I don't anticipate seeing in this region anytime soon might be Central Park and New York City. That That is great open space in an extremely dense environment. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. We don't want to become that, though. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't foresee that, but... <laughs> in New York City, we'll keep them separate. <laughs> If there, are, if there are other questions, I guess I would just ask Jenna if you have like maybe some last, like final thoughts of you know why this is so important to Garden City and its future. Oh my goodness, I didn't get my elevator speech ready. <laughs> um, I think um, when you combine the density that the the region is seeing. Um, with um, Garden City lacking a, a heart, a downtown, um, and the floodplain, I think when you combine all of those components, um, there is the opportunity from Garden City's perspective to really do something that would be really, really neat um, at that location. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Did we, I don't know, no, we asked about the August meeting? Yep. Go for it. Okay. Are you available or willing to um, attend our August, what date, Kelly, 26 meeting? If there, are um, you know, for follow-up questions after the full committee has had a chance to review this tape. Do you know what time of the day? Um, they're 5.30 to 7.30. And I don't think, Chairs, we weren't thinking if we didn't invite people and they were available, it wouldn't be for the full two hours, probably. It would be some subset of that. Is that correct? About a 30-minute period or so. Yeah, 20 to 30 and I am available that day at that time. Kelly will get back in touch with you. If, if that yeah. happens, if we need to. Yeah, that'd be great. Ed, anything else? No, I just appreciate everyone's time. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Jenna. I appreciate it a lot. Ellen, Kelly. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate everybody's time as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.